the risk uh, working group meeting for August 5th. We're discussing our potential accepted talk at OSS Summit North America and a proposal we're going to do for the uh, Linux Foundation Leadership Summit, a panel. And I'm looking for risk working group. Somewhere we have the in our minutes. We had at some point put the um, put the link to the spreadsheet where we had all of our ideas. Um, um, here, here. Sean, if if the if the presentation is highly likely to be accepted, um, I suggest that we spend the limited time here, basically kind of uh, trying to collect some brainstorm ideas of of points that are important to include. Then you or somebody else can try to turn it into a first cut, and then we can beat on it either offline or in a another meeting. But um, uh, you know, since we don't meet that often, it won't take long for us to suddenly run out of time. Oh, you're right, David. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're so, right. I mean, the, the, these things are going to come faster than you think. Um, uh, so, I, I, I mean, I think trying to group right from scratch can be hard, but trying to at least brainstorm, gather, and then improve from there, I think would be a good way to spend the, the limited time that we have. I, does anyone oppose that or have a problem? That sounds smart to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, do we have a place to put this, uh, a Google Doc or something else where we can just note down our, uh, you know, suggestions, put things down? And, Sean, I'm assuming that you're going to take lead on turning it into a presentation and come uh, first cut and then come back. And we'll beat on you. I mean, the the presentation. Yes, uh, I'll I will be drafting it and okay. it, getting. I'll, getting I'll create a Google Doc right now, and you can copy it and point it to something official. But this way, we all have some place to start in from. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that sounds yeah. like a good plan. Uh huh. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, desperately trying to figure out where we put the the actual narrative. Might be way down from a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Okay, Here I'm going to wait for it. Kate. I'm going to wait for Kate's uh, link. Yep. I'm work I'm working it right now. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> I, I was going to do the it. same thing. So fabulous, but we don't need two. <laughs> exactly. We don't need two. No. Okay. No. I'm pasting it in the chat right now. There you go. Perfect. We have a link, and you can let's see. Okay. All righty. And yeah, a smidge of stuff. Yeah. Okay. You want to paste your abstract from your. Um, yeah. Do you want me bit. to grab it? Or do you have it handy? No, or do I, you want me to I, grab it? I, I, I grabbed it. Uh, these are these are the. So what, what we have um, are previous discussions and that's linked in this other Google Doc. Yep. And I'll bring over the 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 panel I believe it was the panel idea we were gonna focus on, right? No, we're focusing no. on the talk I talk idea. Yeah, the, the, a panel's easy. You show up, we you talk, unless somebody is presenting and even if you're gonna present, usually panels you have like a five minute talk just presenting your own view and presumably people can present their own views in five minutes easily enough. Okay. Now, I, I think the issue here is this broader metric stock because you're in many ways trying to represent this group. Right. So, yes, that's, and I think, I think that's what we set out. That's definitely what we set out to do when we originally. Yeah. Now, here's the challenge. It's August. The presentations is September. <laughs> I think the slides are due. Oh. Two weeks I just before. tried. So. Yeah, I tried to. I tried to. I just paste inside of Kate's shared document. Oops. That we don't have. Uh, 
just have to find the right. That's to goodness. I have to find the Jesus. Zoom. I'm assuming you I don't have like a, the... a blurb already that got. Yes, he does. I just I don't have it. I'm going to stop sharing and someone else can share this and I'll go find it and paste it in. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll um, open up Kate's document, which I have now, and I pasted a link. And okay. from that link, I think I can paste the abstract. So this is these are the notes that led to the abstract. And I had and and uh, basically above above this line is largely what was submitted as a panel instead of a talk and but what I, but the final air the final narrative of it is just refined it's just there's editing that i did just to make it sound a little more perfect yeah. uh, than i did earlier sorry I'm, I'm deleting now my stuff you just put it in so fine i'm gonna it's gone yeah. there we go we're good. Huh. Oops. No. Whatever. <laughs> oh, need to be a normal tech. This needs to be a folder. All right. So. Uh Definition. Well, fine. <laughs> All right. So I, I did actually, I was actually able to, through some very interesting VPN Google who find, find the actual thing that I submitted. Okay. Well, I've we, we pasted it in there already for you. Oh, you found it. Okay. Perfect. Not All right. Between, so. Between myself and Dave, I think it's it's all sitting in there right now. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And so we should talk about how how we want to talk about this, and if we want to do it as a group presentation, um, I kind of I can't, I don't know how do people feel about that. I mean, I think you can only have two presenters. Yeah, it, 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 I think it's only been set up to accept one presenter actually right now. But uh, I think us present, you can only give us, you can give us credit when you, um, you know, what, what is the risk working group if you want to. I don't think we need to be standing on stage though. Probably be sitting in the audience heckling. So I think the, I think that, I think nominally we want to communicate the complexity, and I think that's partly visual. Yep. Uh, of of what dependencies are and how they can come into existence in various ways. Like as we work through with the Google Summer of Code students to calculating lib years, uh, there are libraries that say it has to be less than or equal than a version or greater than a version, and what do you say the Libya is on that? I mean, most package managers will just use the highest level version that, that it allows. Um, but if there's dependencies that require lower level versions, then the package managers choose one. Um, so there's choices. It's going to be older make. than the late. Well, sort of. There's actually not choices that you're making. Um, if I if I depend on, let's walk. I realize we're going into the weeds, but this is probably uh, important since it's kind of the central to the dependency issue is the versioning. Um, <clears throat> I mean, lib years is supposed, I mean, I'm interpreting lib years as what are the versions that you're using versus the version you should use 
and that's the definition and by unless unless you have a good reason otherwise the, what you should be using is the current version if you're using a um, library that forces you to use an older version that means you made a choice to use that library that forces you to use the older version therefore yeah. you're using the older version yeah. now one solution could be nag the the dependency that's forcing that hey get with it you know enable the use of this more recent version which right, could be as right. simple as you know allowing it more likely involves some code changes so you can or must or or is updates to the more recent version but um it's perfectly reasonable for a system to because of the set of dependencies in fact that is the problem uh because the set of dependencies you use some of them are forcing the use of old versions and the point of measurement, not just libures, but measurement in general, is to alert you of that state so that you can yeah. make better decisions. Because um, I view measurements as the point of measurement isn't for amusement, it's to help you make better decisions. Right, right. And the, I mean, the complexities that, that we've identified just to, maybe maybe the focus should be we had like, a few minutes of we had these discussions, a solicitation of other experiences that other people have had in, in, in trying to resolve these challenges and a our proposed minimum viable metrics and why we think those are the minimum viable metrics. Does do you see what I'm saying there? Yeah, I'm also just kind of thinking, what, what do you? So you mentioned at the beginning what you want to get out of it is for people to recognize the complexity of this. But is the second part that you want them to help with this, or do you want them to test it? Do you want them to challenge it? Do you want them to present their own ideas? Like, what is, what is the ideal outcome from sharing this information? I think I. Th my sense of the group is is that the ideal outcome is that there that this doesn't become the the problem du jour in open source software and sort of we get a few solutions they become entrenched and we are actively considering the way that dependencies are going to evolve over time uh, across languages uh, that it's a dynamic system and it will always be dynamic. Uh, does that make sense? It does. Like, I, not... like I don't think it's a solved. I don't think it will ever be a solved problem. No, but is the hypothesis that it's going to get more complex? I, my observations from talking with this group for the last year or whatever is that it is. It's, it seems. It appears to be getting more complex rapidly. And, and unless I'm hearing, and unless what I'm hearing from others is different, then unless what I, unless I'm misinterpreting all of our conversations, which is entirely possible. Um, no, I, the, I, I agree with you. I just, I was just pushing on it just in terms of the thing that we're trying to convey is that there's a rapid acceleration of this as an issue. So we as a community need to take an approach <laughs> or just like take some kind of recognition for this being a problem and to start to explore yeah. ways to turn this into something that's manageable versus untenable. Right. And, and I think then the, that sort of leads in naturally to the minimum viable metric idea yeah. where we have the, this, this core set of things that we think can be measured uh, consistently and would provide a, a shared sort of reference point. Uh, I think I think the problem that Dwayne has mentioned and I've mentioned several times, like there's the problem of I've got 11,000 repos with all these dependencies and I don't know how heavily all of them are used and where my highest risk is across my enterprise. 
I think the special case of safety critical systems is another area where dependencies pose risk. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's and, and there is not a there's not a clear dis, there's been we've started a few conversations, but we haven't there's not a clear differentiation um, between like security work and understanding dependencies. Security work, dependencies surely affect security work, but security work encompasses more than dependencies. Is that fair? Security is certainly way more, more than dependencies, absolutely. Right, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And actually, to be fair, the other way too. I mean, dependencies have issues other than security. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I think dependencies influence or they're an input to analysis of system security. Whereas um, I don't know that sec security concerns, I suppose are an input into how we evaluate dependency metrics. Like Libier has a meaning to somebody when it when it's the, the libraries they're using are so outdated, There's there are clear and present security risks. Yeah. Well, if, if even if there's no known security vulnerability in them, the odds are good that when one is found, you won't be able to update. <laughs> if I'm using yeah. version one and the version 10 is the current version and nobody knows of a vulnerability in version one, the odds are excellent that when one is found, I'm doomed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. So how do we... I'm thinking of a giant visual right now, a Venn diagram that simply states that with security, dependencies, and there's an overlap, and then a giant thing around it that says this is actually all just about risk management. Um, yeah, I, I think I think there has to be a risk management framing. Well, I, I did say, hey, define risk management because in fact, there's other kinds of risks beyond. Uh, there's many kinds of risks. There's security, um, uh, license, um, invalid licenses. Right, but but risk. So there's there's like if I was to. Risk is just any like anything that could maybe go wrong and alter the outcome of something. It's as broad as you can make it. Well, I don't know if it's as broad as you can make it, but uh, I mean, there are actually official definitions of, of risk. I'll have to jump up, jump one for you, but um, uh, let's see here, define risk. Uh, and typically it's defined in terms of, uh, in, um, of uh, probability and impact. Um, yep. Okay, uh, whoops. Uh, we got two of those. What? Okay, so you want what is risk? Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't uh, do that first. By the way, I, I would. You know, what the heck is? Uh, what is? Yeah, risk? I, 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 yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just. I think there's also this. How embedded are different risks in my organization? Like, I can identify. It's a. Uh, there's the. There's a project by project mindset, about risk, and but there's also uh, an ASPO, mindset, about risk. And those are two very different things. And I think there's a third emer emerging mindset about dependencies and risk inside of corporations that are not traditionally open source contributors, but they're just like insurance companies or. I think insurance is the right word. Insurance, because I'm seeing a lot of resonance on insurance happening in the supply chain now. Mm -hmm. So maybe work on the word insurance here. But, um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of discussion, too, that um, we need a way for consumers to understand what's really happening and, you know, who can actually tell consumers whether something is secure or not and the dependencies and so forth. So some of these are factors that will eventually be used in insurance type of discussions, I think. Like, what is the what is a consumer's report happening for security? You know, yeah. Like, you know, can you trust this or not? That type of thing. It's, it's more than safety, but yeah. It's yeah. less less uh, stringent than safety, but I think we're going to start to see 
you know, have people made a conscious effort and we're starting to see criteria where I think people like consumers reports and other um, groups are going to focus on some metrics to look at and compare across uh, products so that they can give a read for security, they can give a read for other things. Yeah, and I've, I've actually given a couple of talks to um, research, uh, to the insurance industry, and, and they're very wildly regulated, like there's no consistency across state lines. Right, and so the question becomes is can we build on some consistency so they have a chance of actually being effective? So yeah. You know, yeah. Internationally effective. Yeah, and they, they, they do things that are they interpret, I mean, like, so for example, we're not supposed to use um, things like credit score to determine insurance ability in some states, but they not only do that all the time, but they also look at your Facebook profile and your Twitter, your Twitter feed, like insurance companies are incorporating those things. Uh, side. So from a risk perspective, what uh, do we create? there's a potential we measure something that ends up uh, undermining a piece of software that's just fine. Is there, isn't there? Yeah, but by the way, I mean, I, uh, I, uh, you asked about defining risk. Uh, yeah. You could do worse than this one. Future potential events with a yeah. negative impact. Yeah, that, yeah. And, you know, the DOD has a reason to worry about risks. Uh, you said, uh, I, 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 I really, you, you were being a little facetious there, um, uh, Sophia. But, no, no, Sophia, I would say everything. I know you didn't actually mean that. Um, but I, I think I, what I tell people is if it's currently happening, it's no longer a risk, it's a problem. Yeah. And you have to solve problems, but now it's not a risk yeah. anymore. It's already happened. The point That's of right. risk management is to identify and eliminate them yeah. before they become problems. Okay. And yeah. a lot of people seem to think that, oh, I now have a problem. That's a risk. No, no. The, the, the risk was that you failed to think about risks and now you have a problem because you didn't anticipate the obvious in many cases. Yeah. So, but, but I, I think that's, that's the, I realize you were being facetious, but I, I really do think that this proactiveness of looking ahead is kind of the key to thinking about risks. The whole point of thinking about risks is so that you can be proactive and fix things before they become problems. Yeah. Also, just like, I'm, I guess for me, part of my, like, the stickiness is that I used to work on risk models from a business investment standpoint. Um, cool. and everything was quantified to a dollar amount. Like and an I'm actuarial thinking about, like, tables kind of a thing. It's like, yeah, it's like if something could go wrong, like it's just, it's going to cost more money to deal with it. So everything yeah. gets a dollar amount associated with it. Whereas in the context of open source, yes, there is funds flowing, but that isn't actually how you're equating things. So I'm just kind of trying to wonder what is this, the singular currency that things get equated back to it's not if it's not dollars money. it's dollars still it's dollars, <laughs> dollars still. Well, yeah I, like um so you you will find articles out there um from the cost of solar winds and things like that you know where sort of hundreds of millions of dollars type of deal where they have made the estimate of how much it took to sort of resolve some of that and that's all supply chain issues that have happened in different ways and you know, they, they had dependencies and the dependencies were corrupted. So I guess then it's really changing the view of who's accountable for paying for that problem. That's different. Whereas in an organization, you're, you're assuming all risk of that because you've made that choice. Whereas in an open source supply chain, there isn't as clear of a delineation of accountability who actually pays for the resolution. No, actually, the person who charges for a product pays for it, has the risk, and they should be paying for making a um, the resolution. So if they've distributed it, they're responsible, and that's what's happening today. At the end of the day, yeah, but, but I, I don't. 
I think the challenge is people don't assume it though. Like the company- No, they don't want to. They don't want to. It was free, therefore it's probably gonna be perfect, right? Yeah. Yeah. So then maybe that's that's kind of the call out then is that there is still a dollar amount associated with this and it's non-zero. And just because you use it doesn't mean that you're assuming someone else is accountable for it. Yeah. Yeah. Now I I will say that a lot of people, it is a big struggle to do that estimate. Uh, of Got the it. I mean, you know, mathematically, it's easy. You know, multiply the probability by the loss if it occurs. You know, there's your expected value, right? We're done. Um, I've even got some books about this. Uh, if you give me a moment, I can I can dredge some up uh, where they do some. There's actually been some interesting models that do this. Um, but uh, re- regardless of that, even if you don't know or can't justify it. Um, knowing that there is going to be a potential expected cost. Now, there, there are some nuances we may, we may or may not want to talk about. One is that for a lot of organizations, uh, those who bear the costs are not the ones who uh, who are making money. You know, basically, you know, users are the ones who end up with the costs. Uh, does that mean the money flows up to the developers? Well, no. <laughs> And so the developer's not expecting to have any cost. You know, oh, I put a buffer overflow in. Am I expected to get sued? Probably not. Yeah. I don't know how to deal with that. Well, this remember, there's an open source license and all warranties are disclaimed in the license. Uh, yeah. unless, unless you pay for a separate, li- uh, a separate thing, well, in which case, not- now yeah. you got, now you have a different conversation. Right. Right, but. Yeah. Well, the the good news is that's not limited to the open source. Most of the proprietary or closed source licenses also disclaim anything. So, see, we don't. There's no need to do any work because uh, the costs are entirely borne by the customers. So the, the problem solved. The, so if there's a process to, for us to follow here to make sure that uh-huh. you know uh, this comes off to communicate a really complex series of conversations. The next steps seem like number one. I would put together. Whoops! I can't hear you. No, we lost him. <laughs> I think oh he was about goodness. to say he was going to put something together, and then the next one we could basically—I don't want to say tear it up, but oh yeah, it. It <laughs> I thought tear it up. Yeah, he can watch. I think he can watch us saying this in the recording. That's all good. <laughs> Oh, here we go. He's coming back. Oh, good. Hello again. All right. Sorry about that. Hey, but, you're being a trooper here. You've got yeah, an interesting set of challenges. Uh, I've been frantically texting my wife for 15 minutes. Could you get my charger from the car? But our children are uh, active. So, like, they're just in the restaurant, but I'm, I'm, Lord knows what's going on. I was saying is I would put together I could put together like a draft organization of what the the presentation structure of the session might look like and and then share share that with this group and we could go back and forth asynchronously with it maybe even create a temporary slack channel for this discussion um I don't know if that I don't know if a slack other slack channel no no slack channel how do, how do people prefer to edit or ping each other on these Google Docs? Tag the person. Yeah, you can tag the person in the doc. Although, really, I'm expecting, Sean, I'm guessing that you're going to be creating an early draft deck. And then I would propose working off that. I mean, I, right now, I think we're brainstorming. We're trying to get the key, some key points. You're going to go off, create a magic version. And then uh, absolutely, you know, announce it to everybody. Uh, I will note that mailing lists are probably the better way. To, I, I, it's very hard for me to track 3,000 Slack channels. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so. it's hard for me to track 3,000 emails. Um. Oh, well, it's, it's easier than 3,000 Slack channels because email actually yeah, knows about yeah. <laughs> knows yeah. about things. Fair enough. <laughs> Is that email all right with everybody else? Sure, we have a we have a mailing list. We can use it. I I all of them are fine. Yeah. All right. I, yeah. I'll use email then, since there seems to be some preference there. 
and I'll, yeah. I'll some of the other folks uh, like um, Mike, Mike, Mark. I can't remember his name from Microsoft as well as Dwayne from Indeed. Um, mm -hmm. Discussion because I think they gave some really important contributions to what we all ended up presenting here. Um, so, so, Sean, here's what I would suggest. Uh, you're going to take this doc that we wrote. We're, you're going to create a slide deck from it. Um, yeah. Announce on the mailing list, I got a slide deck. Include the URL so we can go see it. If you want particular people to work on sections, within the Google Doc, you can just say, you know, highlight with a comment, say at somebody, and that will kind of assign, hey, look at this, please do this, what's wrong with that? Okay. okay. So and that way we don't we don't have to try to do the minute, you know, tweaking with any mailing list, which doesn't make any sense. But the the general okay. announcement of hey, I got a first cut. Um, and I would try to get that done if you know. I'm happy to schedule your time. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, I would suggest trying to get that done soonish. Yeah. Um, no, I, because. Yeah, Whatever, whatever you come up with as a first cut, once you have some structure, we can, we can uh, make a lot, make progress on. Okay, and, and I, I, do, I think is it all right, or does it seem overkill to try to also have a corresponding sort of to keep the elevator pitch in front of us, um, so that as we go through and make the edits, that the why we're doing this and making these edits is in our minds clearly given the I, I don't of, understand what the value is you're trying to make a presentation nobody's gonna um, care about I guess, the, I guess the value is when you get five people building a presentation it's like designing a house by committee you can end up with all these different disconnected oh. messages right <laughs> so no, you're the you, master messenger <laughs> okay all right all right yeah. You're, you're the master messenger. If we disagree on something, I mean, you know, if, if there's any questions, add a, you know, people can add comments and highlight and, and so on. The architect. Um, I'm the architect. I Fourth, agree Matrix. With Fourth Matrix movie comes out in November. I'll be in it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Is that oh, what you meant you by won't. architect or? No, just in the analogy of the house buildings. I've heard that oh, before. Oh. Oh, see, we were talking about technology, and I just drove straight to the Matrix. Sounds good to me. I mean, it's hard to not have a basic analogy with most things because I, yeah. I do yeah. see the Matrix everywhere. Yeah, I, you, I, well, we, you know, we can lay, we can name you lead janitor. Lead janitor, I like that. <laughs> I, I may actually put that on the slide. <laughs> so, but, but, but in all seriousness, I think you know, if we disagree, that that's okay. That's where that's where we'll end up focusing our discussion then, and probably coming away smarter for it. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. That's that's today's Wednesday. I Thursday. Yeah, I certainly have um, a few other tasks like this that need to get taken care of. Um, so this this will this will be right in my wheelhouse of things I'm doing this weekend, and okay. I'll get it up by early next week. That'd be great. I think if you can get it out by sometime next week, uh, yeah. as I said, first cut, and it's okay to have a slide of, hey, I'm not sure what to do with this. Is. <laughs> yeah. But you know, having at least a first attempt of one person trying to take all this stuff and organize it, we can go from there. Okay, that is what I will do. Um, we're at time, and for the third time this summer, I'm randomly in Illinois between Chicago and my home during this 2 p.m. Thursday call, and there's absolutely no coordination or conspiracy here. So I do not believe I have any travel planned for the remainder of the year until I get to OSS Summit North America, assuming I'm allowed to go. I think I will be, though. I think it's easier for me than a corporate person. I just got approval, but now I'm nervous because the rates have gone up. <laughs> like, if oh, I yeah. posted like, two months ago, I think I would have felt better about it, but now, like, I'm in this like awkward limbo where I have a week to decide if I'm going and everything is just. Are the airline rates going up or the hotel rates? Uh, the COVID, oh, rate. COVID rates. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Well, what I can tell you as a survivor of the Delta variant being the hotbed of that here in Missouri is you're tired for two days. You have some intestinal difficulty and 
then you're, then it's over. Like if you're vaccinated, it's just an inconvenience, uh, no more or less than the flu. But I, I guess they hear their, you know, there's if there's new variants that get worse, then that's a different problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the conference is doing everything they can do to make it yeah. reasonable. So I, I've been yeah. appreciating that the moves that they've done so far in terms of the precautions. So I think they're doing yeah. the right thing. It's just like personal anxiety. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I wear masks to the grocery store now again. Yeah, I, I, I've I've stayed wearing masks to the grocery store. Just how I, I roll. <laughs> Not I saying I the on the other hand, I, live in, I live in Missouri. Okay. I went a month being the only person in the grocery store with a mask, and eventually I just, just felt too dorky. No, you gotta yeah. stick it out and start putting fun messages on them. The only yeah. part where it's challenging is I usually pick my fruit by smelling it. So that's been a oh. little harder. Yeah, I hear you. Well, thanks for a great meeting for the risk working group. I think uh, I let us go over time by only one minute today, which is, I think, a record. So I will see you all. You'll hear from me early next week, and we will talk again uh, two weeks from today, when, whenever that might, I guess, four plus 14 is on the 18th of August. Safe travels, Bon. Safe travels. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Bye.